This afternoon, uh, we have another great panelist and global uh, thought leader. Um, these days, we are witnessing uh, one of the most significant shifts in financial market infrastructure in many decades. And as we discussed this morning with Donna uh, from Steady Street, actually many financial institutions, including UBS, have been working on, in this space for almost a decade. This is probably a good instance of the Amara's law, where we overestimate the short-term effect of new tech, but we underestimate the long-term impact that it's going to have. Um, and Lawrence, uh, you at UBS have been working on your own tokenization platform, again, for quite a while. It is called uh, UBS uh, Tokenize. Yes. And your organization, HLink, uh, you know, worked together recently. And we demonstrated how tokenized funds can be moved, can be moved securely and compliantly across uh, networks. But can you tell us more about UBS Tokenize, what it is, um, again, what problems it's solving, and what is the, again, the role within the UBS's broader uh, digital strategy? Yeah. Yeah, thanks a lot for having me here, Fernando. Fantastic. I think there's so much movement, especially also on this side um, and in the American continent, right? We see just so, so much moving. So, hi, I'm, I'm Lawrence. I'm, I'm leading UBS Tokenize, which is our in house tokenization service. We actually work with all the different um, business divisions from UBS, meaning from personal corporate banking, wealth management, investment banking, and asset management. And we help them to develop tokenized products um, and then yeah, also bring them to, to, to the investors. So we help them along the whole value chain, meaning from the structuring, origination, tokenization, and the administration of the tokenized product. Um, we also have custody capabilities and, and, and distribution capabilities. So. And can you explain why you built all of that in-house? There are other you know, tokenization platforms in the, in the market. So how is UBS tokenized different? And what do you think is going to enable, enable you to scale the business, again, as part of a, a universal bank? Yeah, yeah. I, I think you, you mentioned it. It's, it's actually a, quite a journey we've been in to figure out how do you design this best, right? And what you learn, or what, what's the key difference with tokenization with the wider crypto world, is in tokenizing, you're combining securities, regulated products with technology. And I think that's what we can do best as a bank as well. So we can actually leverage the product expertise and then build these new tech capabilities with the same trust and security which we apply to our traditional uh, banking services. Um, and, and I think that's one is key, right? The, the trust, the security around that. Um, and, and there we, we see an advantage of us as a bank actually doing the tokenization directly in-house. I think we could discuss an actual instance of, uh, you know, um, tokenized, UBS tokenized being used in, in, in production yeah. or as a, as a part of a, of a pilot. Um, as part of that, I'd like to dig into, you know, our uh, collaboration and what we've been doing and what was announced uh, recently. Can you give us an overview of the collaboration uh, between UBS and Chainlink and what was achieved uh, uh, you know, between us and also our, our another partner, third partner, Swift? Yeah, absolutely. So really exciting stage now. So we launched our um, Singapore-based money market fund, the UMINT, uh, last year. And that was really the first step. So you really bring a product into the token or the, the um, kind of blockchain ecosystem. So we launched it on Ethereum. But now, with the digital transfer agent, you really put a lot more utility. You, you start really bringing the whole fund onto the chain, right? It's, a, it's the next step you have to take. It's a lot more functionality around it. So what we did today is actually the first in-production uh, transaction of redemptions and subscriptions directly on-chain enabled by the digital transfer agent standard from, from Chainlink, where we really see, well, it, it's a bit like uh, a space suit, right? Or, which we have now over our money market fund to bring the seamless connection directly on there as well. We're still a bit in a hybrid world, but, but the goal is really that you can use the advantages of a blockchain and fully manage the end-to-end -end life cycle of your fund directly onto the blockchain itself. But I think the fact that it's hybrid, I think it's actually meaningful. Mm. Because we don't need to force you know, all the stakeholders in, across the life cycle of this uh, transaction to replace their core bucket systems and make a multi-hundred million dollar investment 
for that to happen, right? So I, I think, uh, again, with our approach and with UBS tokenize, you can help, you know, your partners organically grow into this new, you know, DLT blockchain power feature. Yeah, and I think one of the key features we see as well is the interconnectivity because we're going to go into a hybrid world now, right? There's a slow adoption, uh, increasingly quicker of tokenized assets. But the, by far, the majority of the liquidity, the investors is still within the traditional systems, right? So if we go on, we have to be able that these worlds work seamlessly together. Uh, and that's what we focused on as well with the automation and the digital transfer agent capabilities, and especially also um, the, the, the test we did with, with Swift together is how can we bridge these two worlds, right? And if there's an on-chain event, how can we process it as well in an off-chain in the traditional world? Because not everybody is immediately going to be ready with all the capabilities you, you need to you know, become an investor of, an, of a fully tokenized fund or become a custodian or anywhere else within the kind of value chain. And, and I think that's where it really comes in. It's, it's all about data, connectivity, and then also liquidity, because you want to tap into the same liquidity where it is. Otherwise, you really can't have that liftoff, which we expect. Right? So UBS, uh, UBS tokenize evolving along those lines over time, where you will be remain hybrid and potentially enable fully you know, DLT blockchain-based use cases, or how yeah. do you see that playing out? Yeah, we want to be ready for that world, right? It's, it, it's like if the incentives are right, then more and more assets move in that direction. Um, then we want to be able to serve our clients, right, as, uh, as we do on the traditional side and, and, and give them the right tools that they can actually engage. And I think that was also one of the points which we showed this morning. It goes now beyond, beyond an experimentation. These are now real production trades, right, which we can support directly on chain. Right? Yeah, so from the Chainlink point of view, this collaboration illustrates how Chainlink acts as the connectivity layer or the you know, connective tissue for the new on-chain uh, financial uh, system. But from uh, UBS's perspective, can you uh, explain what kind of role uh, Chilling, uh, you know, uh, plays in when it comes to enabling your vision for tokenized uh, markets? Yeah, yeah. Maybe I have to like, also give a bit of history on how we designed UBS tokenized. It was really designed of taking advantage of the blockchain, meaning like the openness, the ecosystem you have around the composability, the programmability which you get out of the blockchain. And I think that's where we also see how it so nicely fits on how Chainlink develops products and how our product works, right? I talked a bit about the spacesuit because it's really compatible, right? If you look on chain, it's, it's you know, our human smart contract directly interacting with, with the digital uh, transfer agent, right? And, and that really shows this composability and you have this, the same approaches, right? It should be open and usable for the ecosystem to really get the benefits, right? So that we don't need custom integrations. We don't need to build additional tech barriers, right? No, we want to actually do the, the opposite. We want to remove tech barriers. We, might, we want to make it as easily as possible to interact with capital markets. And, and I think that's where it fits very nicely together. And then the other point is as well is, well, yeah, today securities are already mostly dematerialized. So it's all about data handling. But you have to be very secure about that data, right? And that's why the existing system is also like, sometimes you could argue slow, but it's really very secure. And that's where we have to focus as well. If we bring it on chain, we have to have the same security standards. Yep. Um, but now taking advantage of that kind of, uh, you know, of the, of the blockchain. And I think that's one of the core expertises you're bringing from a chain link side as well, because you have been, you know, handling data on chain already for, you know, I don't know, a, a decade at least, right? So um, I think that's where it nicely comes together then. Uh, uh, what you think is the, the already implications for the broader financial ecosystem where many other FIs, FMIs still rely on, you know, existing standards, legacy protocols, and they are, but they're still looking to, you know, to get exposure uh, to blockchain and DLT. Yeah. So I, I see it as well, right? I mean, like, our clients, they don't ask for a tokenized asset, right? They're really more looking, is there an advantage? Is there a utility around which you can get when it's tokenized? And that's what we focused on. Like, if we tokenize something, can we do it better? Can we make it more efficient? Can we bring in a utility to that asset versus, you know, the traditional one? 
And then you will have natural adoption, right? Then nobody needs to ask for something tokenized. It will just be a superior product. Now, actually, uh, just before uh, you know, coming to, to the stage, uh, Lars and I were discussing uh, a pilot that we did uh, uh, back in the day, uh, 2023. 2023, yeah. Uh, back then, uh, I was the CFSBI digital. In Japan, but could you share with us uh, this story and how this fits into the discussion we're having now? Yeah, I think we, we went together and we wanted to design and showcase that we can do a full cross-border transaction real life directly onto the on a blockchain without going off chain. So we can do everything on the existing legal frameworks, right? And that, I think that was already a great, a great premise. And we sketched it out. Uh, I, we actually paid more for the lawyers than for technologists. Really? Um, so I think that, that, that is always one thing which I kept. But in the end, the, pro the transaction worked beautifully, right? And we were like all out of like three different jurisdictions, Switzerland, Singapore, and, and Japan watching it. But actually, the one challenge we had was the traditional payment lag in the end when we were yep. taking it off chain. That's the one thing where it broke. And I think that's a nice, nice point again is like, OK, I think we, as soon as we bring then the payment lag on chain as well, then you can avoid these type of disruptions, right? Yeah, I think, I think we kind of showed that uh, actually by using DLT and blockchain, you can reduce the operational risk mm -hmm. if you do the right thing and design the product. Uh, properly uh, fr from the get-go. So I'd like to get a, a maybe more technical uh, for the last uh, one or two questions. Uh, Lawrence, uh, UBS is now using uh, Chainlink's uh, DTA, data transfer uh, agent, uh, which is a technical standard. And for those who are not familiar with it, can you explain what is, what is this standard and what is relevant uh, when it comes to you know, institutional tokenization? Yeah, yeah, so I mentioned it a little bit. It, it, it's a bit the spacesuit, right? It gives additional utility to the existing fund, right? And what it can do now is that you can really uh, trigger all the transactions directly onto the blockchain and then bring the whole fund administration and at some point maybe even, even the transfer agency directly on the blockchain and, and manage just one registry. And I think that's where the digital transfer agent um, standard from Chainlink comes in because it has like all these great utility points which are then connected to the fund, meaning you want to trigger a subscription, you have all the data there to actually execute that transaction directly on chain. And, and yeah, we were able to test it, but now actually do it in, in, in real life this morning as well. Um, you get other advantages as well, because what we see, we, we build in a blockchain agnostic world, so we started on Ethereum, but yeah, you don't know where this world is heading in five years, so. Uh, I, I think that's where you'll see another advantage is then how do you manage cross-chain, right? Sometimes you have certain chains which have a purpose, a different purpose than ours. So we're also exploring there, like, how can we use uh, the DTA to you know, manage our fund across different networks as well without getting in the complexity that we have to go and launch everywhere as well. Actually, I want to ask you what's coming in the next five years. So mm. I think uh, this pilot between uh, UBS Swift um, and Chainlink was a very meaningful milestone. But what comes next for UBS uh, Tokenize? Can you share more about the, the product roadmap and what's coming? What do you guys have in the pipeline? Yeah, I, I think we are on a very exciting point where we have like this increasing commercial adoption, right? And I think it's it's a couple of things falling in place. It starts with the regulation, it's technology, and now it's especially also the cash lag having in place. So for us, it's figuring out how can we now use this. And, and make even more interesting products. But it's really about finding the right product fit, right? Because we have now established we can tokenize quite a, very, uh, quite a variety of different assets. Uh, but where does it make sense, right? Where is the demand? Where can we bring an advantage for our clients to it? Um, and I think that's what we want to look now is like on one side on like how can we bring more of the fun, for example, lifecycle with the DTA on chain and really enable that in a, in a scaled production setting. And the, the other side is also how can we bring new utility? Like we have now this like uh, cash lag, stable coins, big topic. How can we use that and make our products actually more interesting? I could agree more. I think we need uh, either, we need not either or, it's, we need efficiencies and value for this uh, to become uh, mainstream. Uh, that's our thesis. And I said before, I, I think maybe you are too humble and UBS underestimates the impact that. You know, you guys have had uh, over a decade, 
And I'm looking forward to you know, continuing to work with you guys and have you as agents of change. Again, there's like a many of you, it's up to us uh, to make it happen. Again, I'm super bullish. So yep. uh, thank you for, again, joining the panel and enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you, guys. Thanks for having me. Thanks.